Merci. Merci à l'écho du Boiron. Euh, chers amis, je vous souhaite la bienvenue à Genève. Uh, some speaker will speak in French uh, during this uh, opening ceremony, so you have the possibility to have a, a, a simultaneous translation. Take your uh, headphone and choose the right channel. Le premier orateur est une personne très importante pour nous puisqu'il s'agit de Sami Kanaon qui est conseiller administratif, autrement dit vice-maire de la ville de Genève et en charge du département de la culture et du sport. Bonjour à toutes et tous. J'espère que ce démarrage en musique vous a inspiré pour votre séjour à Genève. Je suis très fier et heureux de vous accueillir au nom du gouvernement de la ville de Genève dans notre ville pour votre sixième congrès mondial des jardins botaniques. Genève est une ville qui a une longue tradition scientifique. Évidemment, vous connaissez peut-être Genève comme ville internationale, ville des Nations Unies. On est d'ailleurs à deux pas du Palais des Nations. Ville de l'horlogerie, ville de finance, ville du luxe. Nous sommes aussi une ville qui, très tôt, a eu la chance d'avoir un collège et une académie grâce à Calvin en 1559. Nous sommes une ville qui abritait une kyrielle de savants qui ont étudié au sein de son université. Nous sommes également une ville qui a pu attirer le CERN par la suite et de nombreux autres acteurs scientifiques et académiques. Toute cette histoire marque aujourd'hui encore, de manière très actuelle, Genève de son empreinte. C'est grâce notamment au patrimoine légué par les chercheurs et les passionnés qui est aujourd'hui conservé, étudié et mis en valeur dans nos institutions et musées, dont le Conservatoire et le Jardin botanique. Les conservatoires et jardins botaniques sont nés de cette histoire et ce sont une des plus anciennes institutions scientifiques genevoises. Il y a 200 ans maintenant, Augustin Pierre-Amus de Candol a créé le premier jardin botanique Genevois au centre-ville, près de la vieille ville, dans le parc des Bastions, à côté de l'Université de Genève et de la Bibliothèque de Genève. Déjà à l'époque, les scientifiques savaient que l'étude des plantes était à la fois importante et passionnante. Donc vous aurez compris que votre venue à Genève, que la tenue de ce congrès, s'inscrit dans le cadre des festivités et activités liées au bicentenaire des conservatoires à jardins botaniques. Et je sais que l'importance d'organiser ce congrès ici cette année revêt pour celles et ceux qui y travaillent au jour le jour, Pierre-André Loiseau et toutes ses équipes. C'est beaucoup de travail évidemment, mais c'est aussi une envie de vous rencontrer et de valoriser bien sûr le travail qu'ils font au quotidien et les actions qu'ils mènent ici comme à l'étranger. En effet, les conservatoires et jardins botaniques sont autant une institution très ancrée localement dans la cité à Genève qu'une institution très ouverte sur le monde ou sur les mondes. Le monde scientifique, bien sûr, à travers de nombreuses interactions et partenariats dont votre présence témoigne d'ailleurs, à tous les organismes similaires et proches qui s'engagent pour l'étude, la défense et la mise en valeur du monde végétal. Mais une ouverture aussi sur le monde de la société civile, en proposant des activités pour tous les publics et en rendant aussi accessibles que possible les collections et le travail scientifique. Et c'est certainement une des priorités assignées à nos institutions muséales et scientifiques. Pour la ville de Genève également, la tenue et la présence de ce congrès représentent une reconnaissance du rôle que nous essayons de jouer en faveur du respect et la défense de la biodiversité. Aussi bien ici, dans la vie quotidienne, dans notre monde urbain, et on sait à quel point la présence de la biodiversité dans le monde urbain est un enjeu d'actualité et très passionnant pour la population au sens large, mais aussi à travers le monde, avec de nombreux projets de coopération. Je crois que nous sommes toutes et tous ici pleinement conscients à quel point nous devons nous engager pour la protection de notre environnement naturel qui subit de nombreuses menaces. Les enjeux sont énormes, ils sont immédiats, ils sont urgents. Si on considère les répercussions sur l'eau, les énergies, l'alimentation ou le changement climatique en général. 
C'est bien au-delà de la question purement scientifique au sens abstrait du terme que le Conservatoire de Jardin Botanique et vous toutes et tous vous engagez au quotidien et je vous en remercie. Je remercie donc le Botanic Gardens Conservation International d'avoir choisi Genève et de nous offrir donc à Genève cette semaine l'occasion d'échanges que j'espère passionnants, enrichissants et de montrer que Genève, comme toujours, est toujours disposée à être au carrefour des échanges, de la collaboration scientifique en faveur des enjeux du monde. J'espère aussi tout de même que vous aurez l'occasion d'admirer et de découvrir notre ville pour ceux et celles qui viennent pour la première fois et de profiter de la douceur de vivre genevoise. Je ne peux d'ailleurs m'empêcher pour terminer de mentionner que George Keat, qui était un peintre, et écrivain et poète anglais du XVIIIe, lié à Voltaire, avait écrit en substance dans son abrégé de l'histoire de Genève que la petite fleur qui croît sous un superbe arbre n'est pas moins digne d'admiration que l'arbre lui-même, que ce n'est pas la grandeur des objets qui doit attiser notre curiosité, mais leur beauté, leur propriété et leur perfection, et que si on regarde Genève de ce point de vue, il n'y a pas d'État qui mérite mieux le respect des hommes. Je vous souhaite un excellent séjour à Genève, des échanges très intéressants et une belle semaine. Merci à toutes et tous. Maintenant, une, une partie à deux, avec euh, <coughs> ma collègue Michel Price, Head of Science des Conservatoires et Jardins Botaniques. Chers congressistes, chers collègues, chers amis, c'est un grand honneur et un immense plaisir de vous recevoir à Genève à l'occasion du sixième congrès mondial des jardins botaniques pour la première fois dans un pays francophone et en Suisse. Au nom de la ville de Genève et des conservateurs à jardins botaniques, j'aimerais vous remercier d'être venu ici à Genève de partout dans le monde. Nous devons tout particulièrement remercier le vice-maire de la ville de Genève, Samy Canaan, président du département de la culture et du sport, qui soutient avec enthousiasme, engagement et motivation les activités de notre institution. Cette conférence reçoit le soutien de sponsors importants, le Centre international de conférences de Genève, où nous sommes, qui nous a octroyé la gratuité, l'Office fédéral de l'environnement de la Confédération helvétique, qui nous soutient financièrement et avec lequel nous avons une intense collaboration tout comme celle que nous entretenons avec la République et canton de Genève. The Morton Arboretum a généreusement soutenu le Three Tuesday et nous avons reçu un, asp, un appui de Gister et du chocolatier Genevois Favarger, qu'il soit ici chaleureusement remercié. <coughs> Tous les collaborateurs des conservatoires et jardins botaniques ont travaillé avec acharnement et assiduité afin de vous recevoir le mieux possible et afin de vous présenter notre institution sous son meilleur jour. J'aimerais ici les remercier toutes et tous pour leur engagement et leur bonne volonté. Notre aventure a commencé il y a sept ans, lorsque nous avons soumis notre proposition de candidature au BGCI. Plus plus de 3 000 e-mails plus tard, c'est vrai, je les ai comptés, quelques voyages à Kew et à Genève et quelques jours sur Skype, nous sommes très heureux d'annoncer que ce congrès réunit plus de 500 participants venant de plus de 70 pays qui représentent plus de 300 institutions et jardins botaniques. Nous avons pu, grâce à la Société académique de Genève, soutenir la venue des keynote speakers et l'Association des Amis du Jardin botanique, ainsi que 21 communes du canton de Genève, soit environ la moitié, ont permis la venue d'une vingtaine de personnes venant d'une douzaine de pays, qui ont été donc soutenues financièrement. Nous tenons à remercier tout d'abord Sarah Holtfield, et puis Paul Smith et toute l'équipe du BGCI, ainsi que notre partenaire Kuoni Congress pour la qualité et le professionnalisme de nos relations. Cette conférence a été élaborée dans un climat de mutuelle confiance et de, géné de générosité qui, nous l'espérons, transparaîtra, transparaîtra tout au long de celle-ci. 
Cette conférence est aussi l'occasion de marquer deux anniversaires. Les conservatoires et jardins botaniques de la ville de Genève fêtent leurs 200 ans et le BGCI fête ses 30 ans d'existence au service des jardins botaniques. La botanique ne se conçoit que dans la durée pour être efficace. Nos deux institutions en sont la magnifique illustration. Nous sommes trois ans avant l'échéance de 2020 de la stratégie mondiale pour la conservation des plantes soutenue par la Convention sur la diversité biologique. C'est une occasion remarquable de réunir tous ceux qui se sentent concernés par cette échéance et de faire le point sur l'état du monde végétal, de mettre en œuvre les mesures adéquates et de poursuivre les études fondamentales et la sensibilisation de la société et de réfléchir évidemment à la suite. I'm a bit shorter. So at the beginning of this process, Paul Smith challenged us, why are we here? This week, we're going to explore that question. So we are all here at this Congress to share our experiences, our knowledge, and our passion for the living world and the plants that shape it. We are all here, I hope, to contribute to the strengthening of collaborations within our ever-growing community, a large global network of botanical gardens and their associated staff and their expertise. This Congress also gives us a possibility to connect with other international like-minded organizations or entities. We are all here, I hope, to explore the reason why we, as botanical gardens, are important in society. We can define or redefine or even rewrite our current and future roles in society and our roles in solving the major environmental challenges. We do this for ourselves as well as for our stakeholders and for society at large. For us now, but more in future, importantly for future generations. We are all here to participate in shaping, via the Global Strategy for Plant Conservation, our contributions to, for the future of our planet in an ever-changing world above and beyond 2020. These are challenging, uncertain and exciting times for us for many reasons. We are more connected than ever. We are more united than ever. The stakes are higher than ever, especially when we delve deeper into issues such as food security, climate change, and the effects of invasive species. But we are more ready than ever to tackle these challenges, to tackle them together, to build a common future based on shared knowledge, shared expertise, and our shared enthusiasm and our shared love of plants of all sizes and all forms. Today, we have shown that with so many participants present, with so many countries represented and so many institutions represented, that we have the critical mass necessary to make changes from within, to work together to shape the future. By uniting under the aims of this Congress, we become more than the sum of our parts. En tant qu'observateur privilégié de la nature, nous avons la responsabilité d'informer l'ensemble de la société sur les menaces qui pèsent sur notre environnement et de proposer des mesures pour la préserver. Nous espérons que cette conférence permettra d'orienter nos actions de manière solidaire et concertée. Si les jardins botaniques venaient à disparaître, que manquerait-il à la société Cette question à l'esprit, nous vous souhaitons beaucoup de plaisir pendant cette conférence. So I'm now going to read to you a message from Sarah Pearson Perry from the Swiss Federal Office of the Environment. Unfortunately, she can't be present today. Honorable Vice Mayor of Geneva, distinguished guests, 
distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. You have arrived in Switzerland, a small country of 40,000 square kilometres, 26 cantons and four national languages. The land of mountains, watches, chocolate and cheese. But not only. A crossroad of Europe under the Mediterranean, Alpine, Atlantic and continental influences, Switzerland is rich in biodiversity and in landscapes. As is the case worldwide, Switzerland's species and habitats are under pressure. More than a third of our species are on red lists, and habitat loss and degradation is still taking place. With only around 12% of our territory designated as an areas for biodiversity, we are still far from achieving the goals that the international community has set itself for 2020. Likewise, awareness of the consequences of biodiversity loss and the threat it poses to the well-being of our communities is still lacking. As we are all well aware, loss of biodiversity is a global challenge. Governments, local communities, organisations and institutions need to work together worldwide to tackle the main drivers of biodiversity loss. Traditionally, natural history museums and botanical gardens are key actors in raising awareness and teaching communities the story of plant and animal evolution. But for the last decades, botanical gardens have gone further, playing also an important part in ensuring the conservation of biodiversity worldwide. Botanical gardens are partners in global botanical plant conservation programs that, that was developed under the Convention of Biodiversity and together they have created the Global Plant Partnership. These initiatives are crucial for fostering knowledge on plant systematics, ecology, mapping and the steps that need to be taken by governments and communities for ensuring the conservation of plant diversity. The Botanical Garden of Geneva is a wonderful example of the incredible work that's done by such an institution. In addition to being an oasis of nature and a beautiful setting for leisure for the citizens of Geneva, it manages the most important herbarium and plant collection of Switzerland, is an active research institution has research programs worldwide and is a key partner in conservation both for the local and national authorities. On this special occasion, the Swiss government would like to extend its sincere thanks to the city of Geneva and its botanical garden for hosting the Sixth World Congress of Botanical Gardens. Organising and participating in a World Congress is a sign of profound belief that exchange leads to change. We would like to pick this opportunity to most warmly thank Pierre-André Loiseau, Director of the Botanical Garden, and his team, as well as the City Council of Geneva, for making this event possible. We hope that the week ahead will lead to meaningful discussions and initiatives, and set a path for continuing and strengthening conservation of plants around the world. Let us not forget that biodiversity is at the basis of our livelihoods, and losing it is not an option. Finally, it is our hope that you will manage to snatch a few moments of your busy schedule and utilise this chance to visit our beautiful country and this beautiful city. Thank you very much. Dear friends and colleagues, in 2010, the 10th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity adopted an update of the global strategy for plant conservation until 2020. It also decided that the global strategy for plant conservation should be implemented within and as part of the broader framework of the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011-2020. What may have initially been launched to establish a foothold for the botanical community has matured into the recognition that botanic gardens are major contributors towards implementation across all aspects of the convention process. The global strategy for plant conservation has been truly mainstreamed. The idea of a flexible framework of outcome-oriented targets has matured 
and is now at the center not only of the Convention on Biological Diversity, but also many other intergovernmental processes, including the Sustainable Development Goals. On a technical level, the work of the Global Network of Botanic Gardens in many fields, including environmental education, ex situ and in situ conservation, restoration and taxonomy, is foundational for the achievement of broader conservation and sustainable use objectives. Botanic gardens are also key actors in the operationalization of the provisions under the Nagoya Protocol on access and benefit sharing. Due to these connections, many botanic gardens are solicited by their governments to provide technical support to guide the country's national implementation of the Convention on Biological Diversity and other biodiversity-related conventions and processes. The Global Partnership for Plant Conservation has formally committed to providing technical inputs to assist countries in conforming to their reporting obligations under the Convention. This is particularly welcome as one of the sections of the sixth national report to be prepared on a voluntary basis, request information on progress at the national level of global partnership implementation. In your discussions today, you might wish to consider how the global partnership might assist those botanic gardens and institutions that lack the resources to dedicate their expertise to support political processes. As you reflect on the future of botanic gardens and their place in society, I encourage you to also reflect on the future of the global strategy for plant conservation and on your vision on how the botanic gardens community can effectively participate in and contribute to the implementation of biodiversity related conventions. The Plant Conservation Report 2013 prepared by Botanic Gardens Conservation International to review progress in achieving the 16 targets of the updated global partnership and the further update pre prepared in 2016 show that while progress is being made in many areas, a lot is yet to be achieved in the years remaining until 2020. I trust that your discussions will reveal some opportunities to accelerate progress so that we can declare implementation of the updated global partnership a success. At the same time, the Convention on Biological Diversity is embarking on a comprehensive and participatory process to develop proposals for the follow-up to the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011-2020. I invite you, therefore, and the wider botanical community to actively participate in this process. I believe that your views on the shape of a future strategy must be taken into account and you have to be part of the development of this strategy for it to be meaningful for your community. I also believe that unless you are enabled through a truly participatory process to take ownership of this strategy, we will not be able to rely on your full contribution and would not succeed in moving forwards, achieving the long-term vision set out in the strategic plan. With this, I wish you a successful Congress and look forward to the outcomes of your deliberations. Thank you. Bienvenue à Genève. Uh, comme uh, j'ai dit uh, hier soir, ce fut un grand plaisir de travailler avec uh, Pierre-André, Michel, Daniel, Ségolène et l'équipe uh, genevoise. Merci à vous, uh, sincèrement, au nom de BGCI, pour l'esprit de coopération et de gentillesse uh, que nous avons apprécié ensemble. Maintenant, euh, je suis à la limite euh, de mon français et je dois continuer euh, en anglais. Welcome to Geneva. Um, it's a great pleasure to, to be here. And um, when I told my teenage daughter that we were uh, going to be uh, celebrating our Congress in Switzerland, um, our sixth Botanic Garden Congress, she said to me, Dad, do you know what the best thing is about Switzerland? And I said, no, I don't know. She said, I don't know either, but their flag is a big plus. 
Hopefully you will have had the opportunity already to uh, look around the city. Uh, I've been here for a couple of days and enjoyed the, the music and um, almost as if it was put on for, for us, uh, world music, uh, this past weekend. But a beautiful city and thank you to the Vice Mayor uh, for organizing the weather for us uh, as well. It's been, been beautiful. Um, we have, as uh, Michelle said, a big topic to deal with this week. Why are we here? This, of course, is a question for humanity, um, but I don't suggest we tackle that. I think we should look at that in the context of, of botanic gardens. Um, there's a lot of big issues uh, out there to do with plants, food security, energy, health, loss of biodiversity, climate change, uh, and so on. And we were interested in this question about botanic gardens and um, their, their particular role in society. So um, at the request of BGCI's International Advisory Council, over the last year we've carried out a survey on how botanic gardens see themselves, how they define themselves, um, and how they measure performance and success. This is the word cloud that came out from the various mission statements uh, from participating botanic gardens. And you can see from this the words that, uh, that jump out. These are really the, the traditional strengths of botanic gardens uh, working with plants. Conservation, collections, research, education, and public outreach. Uh, these feature in most botanic garden mission statements. We learned from this that 80% of botanic gardens have strategic plans. That's a, a good thing. Slightly worrying is that only 65% of gardens have institutional measures of performance and success, suggesting that uh, some gardens have plans but don't uh, use them uh, for management purposes. But the good news is that botanic gardens are booming. There are four times as many botanic gardens today uh, as in 1987 when BGCI uh, was established. And that must mean something uh, that we're valued by society. What was interesting in this report, and I, I do encourage you to pick up a copy of this report from the BGCI stand, is the way that we measure success our, ourselves. And if you look at those measures, I was very glad to see plant conservation up there in the, the top 10. But we're still uh, measuring um, our impact on society through surrogates quite, quite often. Um, number of visitors that we have and a number of school children who come through and so on. And what's striking from this report uh, is that what we don't make enough of, particularly at the institutional level, um, is the specific conservation activities uh, and uh, impacts um, that a garden specializes in, whether that be something in the local flora or a taxonomic group. Um, in research, often um, academic publications are used as a surrogate for all research uh, outputs. Um, surprisingly, 40% of gardens don't measure the use of their collections by third parties. Arguably, our collections, our living collections in particular, barium collections, etc., seed collections, are our most important assets and what help to define us. And then if we're serious about public engagement and influencing, then we should be measuring the change of behavior and attitudes amongst uh, our, our visitors. And then finally, specialist horticulture. As I'll explain in a moment, we, we grow a wider range of plant diversity than any other professional sector and community. And yet, we often don't have this as a specific uh, institutional measure. So there are various recommendations in the report about perhaps how we might make more of our skills. And it, it's almost as if we don't have the confidence to say, hey, we're really good at this. Um, and I think perhaps it, it partly is a question of confidence. But we have, very, um, well, we have every reason to be confident uh, as, uh, as a professional community. As I say, we're, we're growing uh, enormously. New botanic gardens being established all of the time. Um, over 3,000 botanic gardens now uh, in the global network. We have the most sophisticated uh, infrastructures for growing, uh, conserving plant diversity on the planet. Um, I've just got some pictures of seed banks there, Plant Bank in New South Wales, the largest seed bank in the Southern Hemisphere. Millennium Seed Bank, bottom left, 
Kung in Kunming Institute of Botany's uh, um, Gene Bank for Wild Species. Tremendous infrastructures, the same in tissue culture, laboratories, and so on. So we have um, some great assets. And we mustn't forget our people. We have tremendous skills and networks within the broader network with expertise in ecological restoration, in seed conservation, in red listing, uh, in uh, specialist horticulture, and, and all of these, these areas which are so, so important um, to the conservation uh, and use of plant diversity. Uh, and when we look at our collections, and I would encourage you to go along to Sam Brockington's talk on Thursday on this. We've just carried out some analysis just looking at plant search. Um, as a minimum, given that we, plant search is not comprehensive for all of the world's botanic gardens, we conserve and manage in our living collections and seed banks a staggering 93% of vascular plant families. It would be good to go along to Sam's talk to find out which the 7% are that we don't have in our gardens. 57% of plant genera, and around a third of vascular plant species. We also manage in our collections 38% of threatened species, so some way still to go towards target eight, but nevertheless, um, significant progress. And I think, you know, given all of these skills, knowledge, data that we have, perhaps some of this is, is down to us being a little bit set in our, our ways as well, and I'm, I'm going to digress very quickly now. Um, Husbands can be quite set in their ways. Um, this is a, a husband manual, and rather worryingly, my wife received two copies of this at Christmas. Um, and it explains particularly to wives how, how husbands uh, are um, and is probably quite useful. This is a husband. He may look complicated, but he is, in fact, very simple. He runs on sausages and beer. Now, I don't recognize that uh, description uh, at all. Um, but this one... I do. Um, this is Roland. Roland is spending Easter in his shed sorting his screws. While his wife and his children visit his mother, Roland is separating his screws into flathead, Phillips, posi drive, countersunk, don't try to translate this, translators, um, etc. There are also boxes for washers, hooks, pins, and a bag for fluff. It needed doing, said Roland. I think we in Botanic Gardens are a little bit like Roland. Um, for 200 years, we have been collecting, sorting, describing plant diversity. And I'd like to suggest to you at the beginning of the week um, that that is the means to the end rather than the end itself. I'd also like to suggest that this is where things get exciting. We have the opportunity to use those collections, to use that knowledge, to use that data to better conserve and manage plant diversity. So this week, you're going to hear about botanic gardens supporting food security. You're going to hear about botanic gardens and afforestation. You're going to hear about botanic gardens and sustainable energy. And you're going to hear about botanic gardens uh, and climate change. These are the big challenges, and plants are fundamental to solving those challenges. Uh, and I hope that this week um, will help us to consolidate the work we're already doing and give us new ideas to make a greater contribution uh, in the future. Thank you.